Check them out. They're going to play Blossom with special guests I Prevail from Detroit, Michigan, and Flat Black featuring Jason Hook. That means something to you. All of them going to show up Sunday, September 24th, end the weekend with Godsmack and company out at BlossomLiveNation.com. For all the tickets, info, everything else, this pair here for you. Two for Godsmack for caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. To all our men and women in uniform. I've been a lifelong fan, 20 years in the military, come back. And to find your afternoon show is horrible. Thanks. From the Alan Cox Show. Horrible, horrible. On 100.7 WMMS. Flat Black is the new project from Jason Hook, who was a guitar player in Five Finger Death Punch. There's a great documentary. I think he was in, there's a documentary called Sidemen or something about all of the, God, what's it called? About all the people who weren't official members of bands, but they were in like the touring band or they were in for a little while. Uh, Hired Gun is actually the name of that documentary. It's about five or six years old, but it's great. And Jason Hook was featured pretty prominently in that. Anyway, his band Flat Black is on that Godsmack tour for people not in the know. I had to Google it because the name sounded familiar, but I hadn't heard of the band. But there you go. If you listen to the show on iHeartRadio, on the app from outside Ohio, tell me where you do that. I like to know where people are posted up. Uh, we have Austin in Houston, Texas. Love that. Mary listens in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Steve is one of our South Jersey Bureau Chiefs. Uh, Willie listens in Louisville, Kentucky. And we have a lot of people in the great state of Wisconsin. You know, I grew up just south of the state of Wisconsin. We've got Fat Joe in Eau Claire. Mm. Melinda listens in Green Bay. Ed listens in the Rock and Apple. Jake is in Sun Prairie. Jenna is in Janesville. Wisconsin is one of the states trying to roll back child labor laws. They're not alone. They're trying to do this in Michigan. They're trying to do it in West Virginia and Iowa. In response to grown men and women who are like, yeah, I don't want to do a job like that for that little money. More and more states are saying, let's put kids back to work. So until recently, every state, you had to be 18 to serve alcohol. You had to be 21 to be a bartender. And there's a lot more states. Wisconsin is in the crosshairs now because they are trying to pass a law that would roll back child labor laws to the extent that 14-year-olds would be able to serve alcohol in bars. And... There are differing thoughts as to if that's a thing that should be done, right? And people who own businesses will do the whole nobody wants to work anymore and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, The jobless rate is at record lows and a lot of people don't want to work terrible jobs for no money. And so in response to that, they go, well, let's let kids work. Now, I'm kind of ambivalent about this because I started working when I was 15 and I never stopped but I wasn't in a bar. I wasn't serving drinks. You know, you go far enough back and it wasn't a big deal for kids to be working. But you see stories about like these meat packing plants where a 13 year old is working at two in the morning and everybody's, you know, looking the other way until He's somebody got a family gets to take care got of. a family to take care of. This is part of it. You know, I mean, you put yourself from the perspective of families that are, it's, it's one big vicious cycle, right? But you put yourself in the perspective of families who need every cent they can get. Those families are going to go get out there and work. In Iowa, the minimum wage is $4.35 an hour. In Michigan, it's three eighty-four. In Wisconsin, it's just two thirty-three. So they're talking about now, if you've ever worked in the service industry, Mary Santora has, I have, Bill has especially in bars and restaurants. Most of the people doing that serving work are females, mostly waitresses. And so when they talk about dropping 
the age for people to work, uh, they're not thinking about like 14-year-old boys, right? So these states that want kids working in a bar, ask some grown-ass women how fun that can be, right? It's a really, really good time. It's the worst. When people get hammered. <laughs> so anyway, so listen, when it comes to these states, a lot of them are red states. Let's not uh, let's not split hairs here. Uh, let kids work, I guess, if you want, but you can't say anything about groomers anymore. If you want kids working in a bar because you couldn't put them in a worse possible position to get manhandled by drunks, to have a 14 or a 15-year-old working in a bar. Again, they're not bartenders. They still can't do that, but serving the drinks. So, you know, a lot of the same people who want to ban books on slavery and gay people want to roll back child labor laws, and that's not a coincidence, right? Families that are not of means, to put it lightly, people who need a kid to work. You start working a lot, you're not going to school as much. That's the ultimate thing there, is you just aren't going to school as much. And the more people are uneducated, that's the brass ring for a lot of people in red states. Is you just create that next generation of people who are working for nothing. So, again, these states are going to do what they're going to do. And there's a case to be made for, hey, we're not talking about seven-year-olds. We're talking about 14 and 15-year-olds. And, again, I started working on when I was 15 years old. I had to get paid under the table. I was getting paid in cash. And I never stopped. But you got to knock off the groomer crap if you're going to put 14-year-olds as bar servers in uh, Wisconsin or yeah, West please. Virginia or Michigan or Ohio, I the Florida of the North. I just checked, and they said they will not stop that because uh, they're just using it as a deflection. Nevertheless, <laughs> can I get a judge's ruling on that? Are you sure that's what they're doing? I am. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's why I'm so happy to see Flamey Grant blowing up. Do you know Flamey Grant? No. This is a drag queen who is topping the iTunes oh. Christian music chart. Oh, I did actually hear about this. I didn't. All you had to say was she was topping. That's all. Hey. Uh, Flamey Grant <laughs> is a Christian musician who thought that it was in uh, the best interest of that particular audience to see someone in that position. And there are other Christian right activists who are just uh, clutching their pearls over this. Their undies are all in a twist. But her fan base put this music at the top of the iTunes Christian and Gospel charts. She has an album called Bible Belt Baby. And the song is called Good Day. And this kind of started because people that were giving her a hard time, like Christian bloggers and things, were like, this is terrible and blah, blah, blah. And she responded, um, this is just the beginning or, you know, what's the matter with this being on the Christian music chart? So not only did the song not flop, it was number one uh, on the Christian music charts. There's a little bit of flamey grant. That makes it just a little bit hard to reject the lies you perpetuate. But you're not the keeper of the pearly gate. And it's been a while, but I'm coming back to fight for my place. A good day to come back home. You sent me away. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I would have never heard of Flamey Grant if that story hadn't blown up. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, people in her fan base made that song number one. Now, whether it lasts for a couple of days or a week, uh, they're not sure yet. But um, I just like the name. I name. love the name, Flamey Grant. Of course, Amy Grant was a longtime Christian artist. She kind of crossed over, though, into... About Did Amy Grant cross over? She crossed over into infidelity. I know that. She and Vince Indeed. Gill uh, cheated on their respective spouses. But listen, wrong the with. heart wants what the heart wants. And they are together now. He's out with the Eagles. 
and uh, she's out with uh, another man. The flu? I don't oh, know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but Bible Belt Baby is Flamey Grant's uh, album, and it's doing quite well. So worth looking into, I guess. The world's first full-length contemporary Christian album by a drag performer. And you've got a handful of shows coming up. A shame slay. I'm just reading from the website. A shame slaying, hip swaying, song singing, songwriting queen, a gospel and roots musician from the Bible Belt. And um, it says right there, if you want to sign up for the hot goss. Now I must mm. tell you, I have already filed copyright infringement paperwork. As you should. On behalf of our own Perez Bilton. Appreciate you doing that. Who will join us in on it. about an hour and change. Uh, but um, she'll be doing a, a number of shows. And a lot of these, you kind of got to give her credit because, uh, you know, you got to fish where the fish are. And so she's doing shows at churches and things. Well, there's a lot of churches that aren't against this stuff. Right. How you like that, Mary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mary's not against that stuff either. Right. <laughs> But she uh, always thinks that we're always lumping all these churches together. We just gave them nah, credit. I love that but, no, no, I have a church. Them. I have a church near me in my neighborhood that has a pride flag on it. They're like, God loves everyone, no matter what. And you know, you'll see that in a lot of Episcopalian churches. Now, how do you feel about Jesus Cam? I am so mad right now. <laughs> You're mad? Why? I watched that Jesus Camp documentary last oh, night. Oh, ju- that thing's like 15 years old. 17 years old. You just now. watched it? Well, so there's a new documentary series on Netflix called How to Become a Cult Leader. I started or watching like that. Yeah. yeah, I started watching that at home. So the amount oh, of pound cake's taking notes. You're Dude, just watching yeah. it for research. entertainment. Yeah, right, and he's, I mean, he's watching okay. it at home. <laughs> That's a good detail. It's it's okay the the how to become a cult leader. It's interesting. It's they do deep dives into Jim Jones and Charles Manson, whatever, whatever. Um, but that's like a goof, right? Like it's that, silly. It's, yeah. it's, like, a, it's yeah. like part partly animated for whatever reason. <laughs> Nothing like making cult leaders into just like a silly. Thing. It is kind of silly. <laughs> it, yeah, it's weird. Because it's part cartoon. So I'm clicking around. We watched three episodes of it. There's only six, and I was like, I'm kind of done with this for tonight. And Brian started to fall asleep, and then I saw the Jesus Camp thing pop up, and I was like, Oh my god, Bill's talked about this so many times. And it's a documentary from 2006 that follows Pentecostal church camp, literally the way that I grew up. It follows evangelicals, right? And I was watching it, and the first scene where they're, like, talking to these kids and making them all feel guilty, I started crying and then got furious. The longer that this thing went on, I was so mad at the Pentecostal church and evangelicals by the end of this thing. I was, like, I was so mad I couldn't go to sleep. If only so you'd mad. seen it first run. This isn't the keep 17 me years ago. I, dude, if I'd have seen it first run 17 years ago, I still would have been in the throes of this. Yeah. So the, the difference is, I don't think it would have had the same reaction in 2006. You would have been like, they're just making these. I, yeah. I would have oh, been like. This is all fake. No, I would have been like, this is fantastic. They should get the word out about mm-hmm. children trying to preach the gospel and, um, you know, go out there and spread the word. Like, but watching it so far removed from that lifestyle it made me so incredibly sad for those kids because I remember being that kid and being lied to. You didn't know you were being lied to at the time. But, like, the one scene that really, really got me was when they were like, all right, who thinks that they're a follower of Christ and a warrior for Jesus and all these kids? They're like, dude, they're like ages 5 to 12. Me, I love Jesus. Great, perfect. Okay, who thinks that they want to spread the word and really live true for Christ? Me, I can't wait to do it. Now... Who's a phony and cusses at school and talks back to their parents? And all these kids start to feel real guilty and feel sad. And they're like, these are the sins that will send you to hell unless you come up here and you repent. And so they're like, and you did that stuff. You talked back to your kids, parents. Man. Yeah, I did all that stuff. <laughs> but they, they do. They friggin' indoctrinate you. And I don't know, man. It made me so mad to see it from the other side. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To see it being removed from the situation because my entire childhood, I went to church camp every year from 6 to 18. Was it like that? It was like that. If you watch that show, that if you watch um, Jesus Camp, it was like that. It's children at a summer camp praising the Lord and there were fun things. We did, you know, we still had fun activities and went canoeing and did stuff like that but it was very much... Pin the tail on the heathen. Dude. 
It, it just, it hit me in the way that made, I was very surprised that I was so angry. I was first really sad for the kids. You got triggered. I got heavily triggered. And I sat down joking. I was like, can't wait to get triggered. And then eight minutes in, I'm crying. And I'm like, F religion, F these people. <laughs> I was so mad I couldn't sleep, dude. The one thing I'm not hearing in this post-mortem here, Bill, is Alan and Bill were right. Because you weren't right. Yeah, we are. No, you're not. Were, are, will be. Nevertheless, uh, I was yeah, just, that's a wild movie. It's And it's very, very accurate. It is very accurate to what it's like to grow up as an evangelical. And what I think what made me the most mad was that they were kids. That I was like, I remember being this like, kid. and It's harder I'm, to indoctrinate adults. Well, not and possible. that's what you should do. That it's, should be the new rule of religion, is that you're not allowed <laughs> to join a religion until you're 18. You can't vote until you're 18. You can't rent a car until you're 25. You shouldn't be allowed to have religion Once until Once people you're that age. E- reach the age of reason, you've lost them. Unless you have a red ball cap, and then you get yeah. them right back. But, but that's what I think the new rule should be. And that'll never happen. But, like, I, I, you I will should not cite- be allowed to... Pick a religion until you are an adult. I will cite uh, 2021's uh, album Bam Bam. Uh, you should get baptized when Jesus got baptized at 30 years old. I agree. That, that I agree makes 100%. the most sense. Got some good sinning in. Yes, you've <laughs> kind of lived, you've kind of yeah. learned, you've had your heart broken, got you're some cynical. Good sinning yeah. in. Not a kid, not a not a nine year old who feels guilty about saying a cuss word at school and thinks <laughs> they're going to go to hell for it. Who's only been exposed to what exactly their parents? Yes. It's not like they're giving them a plethora of religions to be like, all right, here's all the different things you could believe. And now you're just drilling one thing into their head and going, and if you don't believe this, you burn in hell, you piece of garbage. Would that you say that I have a plethora? A plethora. Oh plethora. yes, you have a plethora. Oh, you have a plethora. plethora. Yeah, it was just, it was, um, it, I was shocked at how mad it made me. It made me so mad I was shaking and crying. And Brian was like, what? He fell asleep during it. And he woke up, and I'm like, That was when uh, Jesus Camp, uh, Ted Haggard is a big part of that, right? Remember Ted the, Haggard? Is he the pastor or is he the radio guy? He's the pastor. He's the dude that, like, he's they found out. He's not a big out. part of it. He's in I like, just the remember last him five in that. minutes. Oh, okay. He's, I remember him in that. He's barely a part of it. He was the guy that they found out was doing like meth with male prostitutes in in hotel rooms and stuff. Yeah, they're always doing cool stuff. They're, they're always doing <laughs> all fun this fun things. stuff, but then they're like, they they have to live this double lifestyle. Just go smoke meth and hang out with male prostitutes, man. You're allowed to do that. Yeah, it was save that kind of behavior for Buzzard Fest Friday hey! at. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, Mary is uh, so um, out of um, out of five crucifixes. You give it uh, what? Well, I mean, it's Jesus camp. It's accurate. It's it, they're not showing anything that doesn't actually happen in the opening scene. The kids are doing like this dance and this song and they're singing and I'm laughing. And Brian's like, what? Why is this funny to you? I'm like, dude, I have been a part of so many church plays. You knew all the steps. I was like some of the songs are singing. It, I'm singing along. How like, does it make you feel about speaking in tongues? I still believe in that, but I don't think it. I think that it is um, a persuasion for children. I believe that it is something you can do if if it's you know the spirit has washed over you or whatever. But I think we don't got her all the way yet. <laughs> My big problem with seeing it from the other side was realizing how much they took advantage of kids. And I know that sounds crazy that I'm 33 and I didn't realize it, but when you're in it, you don't realize it. You don't you know that what's happening is wrong. Grooming the kids. Not grooming. That's not for, for sex Well, stuff. a very, very oh. heavy, uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Daris, Darison bite. Let's go to Terrace Chase and let's go to the bit. They had the pet. A clip there from Jesus Camp. Alan Amy Grant is doing the Canton Palace Theater Friday, September 22nd. There you go. Oh. Tickets start at $40. She still looks pretty foxy. I got to take a break here. If uh, you want to get a text for anything, 35192. After the break, if you want to join us for the return of the Alan Cox Show cruise, we're going back out on the Nautica Queen end of the month now that we're in August, the 26th for Captain Fun's Floating Fandango. You got to win your way on, though, and we will do that. A couple of tickets after the break for Caller 10 coming up. This is the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our.